Okay, so this picture is showing you food that is rich in proteins. So the salmon fish or all types of fish, okay, different meat, milk, okay, there's different types of beans and also egg. So these are the foods that is rich in proteins. So now let us look into protein itself being a very important cell composition. So it is a complex compound composed of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen elements. All right, and most proteins, they also contain sulfur and phosphorus. So examples of food that are rich in proteins, we have seen the picture just now. And all proteins are composed of one or more polymers known as polypeptides. So in other words, okay, in other words, um, the other name for protein is actually polypeptide. Okay, and then structural wise, there are actually four levels, primary, secondary, tertiary, and quaternary structure. So from primary here, this is the linear chain of the protein, uh, of the polypeptide. So in this case, it consists of one polypeptide. Okay, so as the level increases, okay, these proteins has got more polymers or more polypeptide chain. Okay, next is to look at the, yeah, it says here, each polypeptide, so to say each protein. Okay, each protein is made up of monomers. Okay, remember monomers? Monomers form polymers. So monomers or the small units or the subunits for protein, they are the amino acids. So one chain, polypeptide chain, can consist of 50 to thousands of amino acid molecules. Okay, 50 to thousands of these small units, one polypeptide. So amino acids, how are they linked together? They are linked together by peptide bond. So here amino acid with amino acid, so that means the linkage between these two molecules is the peptide bond. Okay, and they are linked together how? By the process of condensation. Remember, we have talked about condensation and hydrolysis when we discuss about carbohydrates. So condensation is a process of anabolism building up from smaller units, monomers, to become polymers, longer or larger molecules. So this process involves removal of one water molecule. Okay, so this is a process of anabolism. It's a process of building up from smaller units to become larger ones. So hydrolysis is the reverse of condensation. Okay, so you take note over here, what happened is that um, here, each dipeptide, so that means right now we're talking about hydrolysis, it can be broken down into amino acid through that this process, which means dipeptide, di itself means two amino acid. Upon reacting with water, hydro, it is going to lyse it or break it into the smaller units, which is the monomer. In this case, is the amino acid. Alright? Ah, so here, back to condensation just now. If there is further condensation, there will, it is able to link more amino acids and then to form a polypeptide chain. Okay? So each, uh, here, various types of polypeptide molecules can be formed from 20 types of amino acids, okay, 20 types. For example, this is a polypeptide chain right here. Okay, then each type of protein differs in terms of amino acid sequence. So if they are arranged different in different position, that means to say that the sequence is different, Okay, it will result in different types of proteins. Uh, okay, so remember, very essential, what is condensation, what is hydrolysis. 
okay in terms of the protein structure so let's look at the importance of proteins in a cell okay so proteins are used to build new cells okay so these new cells right here building up of new cells repairing of damaged tissues for example if there is wound okay so the injured areas okay is it going to be injured forever no you will see healing right uh, so that means there will be a uh, replacement need there will be new tissues form okay so proteins is responsible in this okay it is involved in repairing of those damaged tissues okay you see how important it is okay third in synthesize of enzymes hormones okay hormones which is the chemical substance in the body okay secreted by uh, glands to act on specific targeted organs also antibodies okay hemoglobin which is in the red blood cells and that is responsible to transport oxygen okay these are all made up of proteins okay also forming building blocks like carotene in the skin collagen in the bones okay to provide strength myosin in the muscles tissues these are all made up of proteins so it is very essential very important in the cell okay so you can see right here proteins in the human body so it's playing very important roles okay in our body so this is the structural protein just now we have come across the term carotene which is found in the skin and the hair in the nails okay so that's why when you have issues with the hair hair loss or the nails or the bones now starting to as we age it becomes more fragile and people start to take supplement like collagen also to beautify the skin right elastin all these are structural proteins proteins in the muscles just now we have the term myosin right here so it's real important you can see the role of protein in our body okay so the breakdown of proteins or the polypeptides by digestive enzymes is going to give us energy so the say protein is also our main is also our source of energy but the main source of energy that comes from carbohydrates okay only if in a condition where there is no longer uh, carbohydrate store then only protein is being broken down to give us energy okay polypeptides can disintegrate into amino acids so this one refers to hydrolysis so this amino acid is then used again to build the protein molecules okay as you can see just now the picture protein molecules in the body you see how important it is like forming most of the structures of the body okay which is all these are made up of proteins and so to say that's the meaning of the third sen sentence protein molecules needed by the body so in details about protein digestion the name of the enzymes this one you will learn in chapter 9 nutrition